Hi, and welcome to the Carroll County Animal Shelter Volunteer Informational Video. Today we're going to go over do's and don'ts of volunteering while you're here at the shelter, proper animal handling, uh, proper attire, and also what to do in the event of any kind of an emergency. So appropriate attire includes long sleeve shirts or short sleeve shirts depending on the weather, long pants and closed toed shoes. This excludes any shorts, leggings, uh, athletic pants, and then no tank tops, midriffs, or um, halter tops. So whether if this is your first time volunteering or your 100th time, always make sure that you come in and sign in on the sign-in sheet, the flowers or pins. This is a pod. This is our adoption pod. The first half is cats and the second half is dogs. This is where you will be spending most of your time. All of the other pods, unless otherwise specified by a staff member, will be off limits due to the animals either not completing their stray hold or they're waiting for their owner to come and pick them up. So here at the shelter we use slip boots on our dogs. They give you more control and they're less likely to slip off whereas an ill-fitting collar or harness could potentially do that. So what you do is you take the harness, you take the slip leash, sorry, put it around the dog's neck, put it to where it's nice and snug on their neck, it shouldn't be tight, and then there will be a stopper on the end of the leash where you slide that down to where it fits at the ring that keeps the loop that's around their neck in a comfortable position so it doesn't get too tight on the dog, but it can tighten if the dog decides to pull. To remove the leash, all you'd have to do is loosen that stopper, take this and loosen it to where it can fit over the dog's head again, and slip it off. Like that. These are our outside run doors. There are two different ways to be able to secure your leash onto the dog before you take them out to walk. You can either use the lower bars and go between those to put the leash on the dog, or you can use the middle opening if the cage is pure mesh. All of the doors have that middle opening available. So always secure your leash before you open the run door, so that way you have control of the dog and it's least likely to get away from you. Also, once you get your dog out, always remember to close your run door back, just so that way it prevents anybody from being able to get out out of that guillotine. We also will have our adoption dogs over here in our side pens. The best way to get them out is to always have a leash in your hand first, and how you would go about doing that is the same way as I demonstrated earlier, putting the leash on. Always make sure that you put the leash on the dog before you open a door. That limits their ability to be able to get away from you. And then you can just open the gate. And you're all set. This is our dog park where you're allowed to take the dogs off their leash. There's only allowed to be one dog off leash at a time to limit any sort of dog fighting that may occur. Most often, the carabiner will be latched onto the gate latch, like this. So what you would do is just come, take this off of there, open the gate, and then you can take your dog inside the park. Here, Once you're inside the park, make sure that you close the gate and put the carabiner back on the latch, so that way that if the dog comes over and inspects the gate, he can't come over and pop the latch up and then open the gate on his own. Once you're inside the park, you can let your dog off leash. They can run around, you can interact with them. We have balls and everything that they can play with out here and just have some good one-on-one -on -one action. But again, only one dog can be loose in the park off leash at a time. If you have a group that you come with and you want to walk with your friend, only one dog can be walked at a time in close groups. But if both of you want to walk a dog, then you can walk together, but you need to be at least six feet apart so that way the leashes keep the dogs from being able to interact. Most of our dogs are dog friendly, but we don't want to take a chance of a dog fight. 
In the event that a dog does get loose, the first thing you need to do is let us know so that way we can close the gate. That keeps the dog inside the fence and will make him much, much easier to catch. Also, if a, dog's get, if a dog gets loose, never chase the dog. That turns it into a game. What you want to do is squat down and make really high-pitched baby noises because that will usually get their attention and they'll come running right to you. If you have issues catching your dog, you can always ask us for help or one of the state inmates that work here. Nine times out of ten, they know their dogs really well that are in their pods. However, they are here to do a job, so your interaction with them needs to be kept at a minimum so that way they can focus on taking care of their dogs and not having interaction with the public. So in the event of a dog fight, there's no reason for you to have to put yourself in danger to break up that fight. Always come and get one of the shelter staff or one of the state inmates so that way we can handle it appropriately. So remember, if a dog ever gets loose, just yelp for help. If you're ready to go back and take the dogs back to their run, the best thing to do is walk to the gate, squat down, and then call the dog's name. And then more than likely, they'll be ready to go and walk right up to you so that you can put the slip leash on them. And then after it's safely secured, you can take them out of the run. So after you're done walking your dog, you can go. make sure you get them back to the same door that you got them out of, the same run that you got them out of. And it's the same thing. Put the dog in, close the door, make sure it's secured, and then remove the leash from the dog. Always make sure that you secure it with both the bar and the secondary latch that prevents the dogs from being able to open their doors. When you come here to volunteer, you'll probably notice some signs that are going to be attached to the cages that the animals are in. These are very important to pay attention to because we do heartworm treat our dogs, so they will have a um, sign that says that they have to be leash walked, they can't get overly excited, and these are the dogs that cannot go off leash when they're in the rooms. Our next sign is going to be potentially something about them being an escape artist, so these are the dogs that you really need to make sure that you have your leash secured on them before they get out of their run, so that way they don't try to escape and then we have to go and chase them. We also have two different signs that basically say that the animal that's in their cage has already been altered, but for whatever reason, be it medical or temperament, they're not quite available for adoption yet. If you see any of these signs or if you see any other signs on the cages and you get confused or you don't quite understand if this is an animal that you're okay to interact with, just come and get one of the staff or ask one of the state inmates. We'll always be happy to help you. This is a perfect example of one of the signs that you might see on our cages. The biggest thing to notice on this sign is it says, please do not remove from cage. This cat has already been altered and she wants to be sweet, but she needs a little bit of time before she can acclimate to being handled. This is Paula Dean, and this is another sign that you may notice on some of our cat cages. Basically, it just states that she is FIV positive, which is feline immune efficiency virus. And what that means is she doesn't really need to be around other cats uh, in the bonding room, which we'll show you in a minute. So if you want to get a cat out, as long as they don't have a sign that says they're not available, you lift this latch here and pull this out and then you can just pick them up and take them over to the body room. So if you want to take a cat into the body room to interact with them, this is the body room here. You can bring them in here. There's toys and stuff. And then you can put them down with the door closed and kind of interact with them and let them play. Can I have my shirt back? Thanks. So we have several feral cats here at the shelter that have already been altered. So they've already been spayed or neutered and ear tipped and rabies vaccinated. They help keep the rodent population down here at the shelter. So if you see them, just let them hang out. Uh, they are not pets. They don't enjoy human interaction. 
This is Shelly. He's our living here at the shelter. The sign says dog will bite only because we couldn't find a sign that says bird will bite. Please do not place your fingers inside his cage. So this is the conclusion of our volunteer informational video. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.